on our travels. We're here at the uh, King's Hall for the Balmoral Show this year and um, it's one of those things that I can never understand. Why do people, why do thousands of people come to this show every year? Lindsay and Natalie are floating about somewhere. We'll let them get on with it. And I'm going to go and hit the bar. That's where I'm going. <laughs> and I'm from Rachel. So where did you get this lovely hat? I am in awe of it. Oh, thanks so much. I actually found it in a wee antique shop in England and I brought it home and I've never worn it and that was a year ago so my mummy told me to come up today and wear my nice hat so I did. The best dressed female will win a £100 cheque courtesy of AT and T Rentals, a £100 voucher for the wardrobe in Ballyclare, treatment at Gemini Beauty Salon on Bloomfield Road, and a bouquet of flowers from Reeves Florist. That's what the lady will win. Imagine if you won to actually go to Barbados. Who would you take? My wife. You have to, do you? I have no option. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I wouldn't try to take anybody else. Very nice. You're looking lovely. Can you tell me who you are, please? Where are you from? So is there anything else here today that you've been interested in seeing? Oh yeah, the whole lot. It's brilliantly done. All the animals, all the exhibitions, it's, it's well, it's well set up. Like. How are you? Well, Greg and I work together, so uh, we, we are eventers and we ride horses for a living, so it's nice for a change to come up here. We're just here to enjoy the day. I mean, we usually work with horses and we don't usually dress up at all, so it's nice to get dressed up and go glamorous for a change, you know? Okay, so Alison, you're back uh, this year hosting the best dressed um, competition again. You could win it yourself, actually. Oh, well, Robin, you know how it is. You just have to make that little special effort when I'm meeting you. <laughs> so did you have to wander around all day today? It must have been difficult finding the best dressed people in, in amongst these thousands of people. Well, luckily enough, I wasn't judging um, because it was so difficult for the judges. I mean, the people looked great. I was just coming along just to host the final for them because last year somebody dropped out and I did it at the last minute. So I did such a wonderful job. They asked me to do it again. And uh, so they had other judges and it's such a hot, sticky day. I'm so glad I wasn't going around begging people to enter. But with the prize to Barbados, there's so many people that have actually entered and have made the effort. So, so you come to Balmore Show every year. I mean, what is it that draws you here? Oh, well, we love the horses. So obviously we're looking forward to tomorrow to come up and see the Grand Prix and the big jumping class. And that's always really exciting. And um, I've brought my wee nephew up today, little Harrison, and he just loves all the machinery, you know, we boys are like.
so they did ask me to point out that they had a really, really tough decision, but they have come to their decision. And there are going to be three boards announced, the best dressed male, the best dressed female, and the overall winner. So very well done. And it was well worth it. It must have been difficult convincing men to do a thing like this. You know what? I think a lot of those guys come expecting to enter, and the guy who won was gorgeous. Did you see her? Flip yes, sick from yes. New Zealand. Lovely. So, our best dressed female is Margaret Cummins. Okay, so you never know who you find at uh, the Balmoral Show. We've come into this lovely little tent, which is actually a radio studio for today. It's uh, part of Downtown Radio, and uh, the lovely Lisa Flavel is uh, broadcasting live on air at the minute. So, Lisa, you're having a good day at the Balmoral Show? I'm having a great day. I'm doing a live radio show, so that's what I like doing, so I'm having a brilliant time. But it's nice to get out of the studio, meet loads of people, and, uh, you know, people come up to you and say hello and all, and it's just it's nice to get out of the zoo <laughs> and get out into the open air, and it's a glorious day. So, yeah, it's good. All right, so what about farming and agriculture? Do you know anything about it? I know the smell of shuck when I'm driving over the hills. That's about the height of it. I'm not a farming girl, I'm a city girl. But a lot of the theme of this year's show has actually been educating people that are in the city about the country and vice versa. So, yeah, it's all of us together at the end of the day. All right, so you've had an, an education. I better go off and get an education because I know nothing about anything to do with the countryside at all. The cows will tell you everything you need to know. surrounded by loads of cows, different strange animals and a lot of mess. Not really a girly scene, but we're going to go and talk to some of the guys here and see what's going on at the show. Well, you look like you have the right idea, sir. It's been a very busy day. Have you been very busy? Very busy indeed. been a good show. And you're just relaxing, having a wee pint? Yes, indeed. So tell us what you do anyway. We, we have introduced these alpine tractors to Northern Ireland, which are designed for the vineyards and the Alps, and they've become very popular with uh, landscapers, farmers, replacing large quad bikes with small tractors instead because they're much more economical. Now tell me something, what speed can they hit whenever they're doing flat out? Uh, 30 kilometres in the small ones, 40 in the large ones. Right, so which one's good for a race then? Um, probably the 40k one. We have an automatic transmission on them, so uh, very easy to drive. Excellent, sir. Yeah, and, um, young ladies and old ladies could drive them. What are you trying to say about women drivers there now? Uh, all types of drivers are, would be very much at home on them. And what sort of people have you had around today, looking at your, your tractors and your equipment? A very large cross-section from the enthusiast to the um, householder looking something to make life easier for them. Right, that's a pretty good hat. Why were you not in the best dress competition that was just on there? Hadn't time to go to it. We're so busy here. The grass machinery here, this is a zero-turn commercial machine, which um, can turn its own circle, can mow up to seven acres per hour. Very popular with contractors, whereas this is a domestic version which is zero turn, moistens your grass, you don't have the grass to collect or dispose of, and it has a turning circle about the size of a saucer. This machine here is for the old ladies, 
our, 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 our old readies or our young readies, we don't have to pull this thing to start it. it uh, press the button, watch your feet there, and you just push this wee lever forward, and away it goes. So it's very lady friendly then? It's very user friendly. This machine here is for for removing stumps in your garden. If you have to cut down the, the landies, rather than dig up the, the, the remaining roots, this thing chops them up into sawdust. Can we get, can we get a wee go on one of these? Can we get on and, and have a wee look at it? Oh, you can, surely. Right, Natalie. I'm going to get you on one of these tractors here. This is very ladylike. <laughs> uh, this machine is a proper small tractor, which is replacing quad bikes, because it will do anything that, um, that your big agriculture tractor will do. And it's only the same price as a big quad bike, and yet very economical to run. It only, it only uses about 50p per hour to run, whereas a big quad bike uses five pounds per hour of petrol. It is easy for the drive, it is very, and very safe because of low centre of gravity. It is designed for working in the vineyards in the Alps, but it's equally at home in, the, um, in Tyrone among the bushes. This particular model is quite unique, just a wee minute before you get on. Quite unique in that you can drive it backwards and turn it into a lawnmower, or you can actually turn the seat around and drive it as an ordinary tractor. So you have actually two tractors in one. And again, it's very user friendly because hydrostatic transmission, the further down you push it, the faster it goes forward and back. So is this a really expensive tractor? But, well, that tractor costs around 15000 but it is designed for the landscapers, um, golf clubs, that type of work, who wants to put all different types of attachments on it. Okay, Bob Sloan, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, and call again. Okay, so it's my turn now to do the Dr. Doolittle thing and try to talk to the animals, get close to these animals. And I, only in Belfast would this happen. Now, Barry, make sure you get this, but somebody has graffitied all over the sheep. Look at that. Absolutely. Who? Who's been near your sheep today? Uh, I graffitied. I am guilty, I'm afraid. You're guilty. Absolutely. So why do they need the little marks on them? Well, uh, I can tell what use that ram has been with because they're marked the same as he is. Ah. Uh, I put out four different rams, so the lambs are tagged so that I can identify exactly what ram the sheep, the lambs are off, and also what ewe they're off. You'll see that the ram has the yellow shoulders, but the ewe does not have yellow shoulders. Okay. He looks like he could do with a bit of a clip there. Uh, well, he will get it, but it'll be at the end of May. <laughs> He's in his natural state. He's not done up for the shoe as such. Uh, he was just driven in out of the field and delivered here. All right. Now, what about the big horns? Uh, they could do you some damage, couldn't they? Oh, they certainly could. Um, the horns are part of the breed characteristic. The long tail is part of the breed characteristic. Do you find these creatures in Northern Ireland, do you? Oh, yes. We've been working with them for 30 years now. <laughs> How many do you own? 320. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, that's not many. Really? And you see, if I wanted to buy one today, if I, if I took the urge to buy one, how much would it cost me? Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't sell you that one, right. because I've only used that for one year. Yeah. But uh, you no, know, later on you could buy uh, a lamb, a ewe lamb maybe, at 30 pounds. The, that's all. That's all. Absolutely. Oh my God. Uh, if you want a pet lamb, you could probably go to some of the marts and buy a pet lamb for 10 or 12 pounds. Okay, so we're here now beside one of the weirdest contraptions that I think I've ever seen. What do you reckon? It looks pretty scary. Yeah. Looks a bit like something out of a horror film. Tell us what you do anyway. Um, I'm a farmer in Yorkshire in England and I uh, started importing this machinery last year and this is my first trip to Northern Ireland and so uh, the farmers pretty much like the equipment. Tell us a bit more about this, this contraption behind us then. Uh, this is made in Thedford, Nebraska in the middle of the United States and uh, it's built primarily for bison cattle. So it's a crusher is it? It, it holds the, the cows in place, is that right? That's right, it restrains cattle for when you want to uh, pregnancy test them or give them a jab of antibiotic or whatever then uh, you can 
do all that safely, safe for the animal and safe for the user. It's got a unique mechanism that squeezes so that rather than the animal bouncing around inside a crush, it squeezes down, restrains them, safe for both man and beast. So you're going to show us a wee demonstration then? I am, yes. We're going to hopefully put one of you two in the crush and uh, demonstrate how it squeezes up. We do things in pairs, so yeah, we're going to do it to go together. <laughs> scared I'm very scared is there a better like a good way to stay here like the, in what position oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> right I'm really we're not really not this. too skinny <laughs> we're not that no, skinny God, what, the guy would insist on a kiss for a reason <laughs> realize this I guess no, that really was that was pretty scary oh, I felt like I was in jail but like getting squished like those films that like the, the walls came in yeah I think it was like a real horror horror movie moment there I think we should get out before we, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that was pretty terrifying. Do you get many people like jumping inside there? Uh, just mainly kids, but uh, you two the first girls. It wasn't too terrifying, I hope, for you. No, but I think you quite like crushing people. You're like, ha, 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 when you're doing that. It's a guy thing, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What am I doing? Leave her. Somebody want to help me, darling? <laughs> Talk. This is Butch. He's apparently going to talk to me. Are you going to make her talk? Thank you very much. You sure lost a lot of crap. That doesn't work. I, it does, it does. And the other thing to remember as well, she's um, feel her here and feel her there. She knows what, something different about it. She's cooler in the white spots and she is in the black spots. Yeah, the, reason, the reason why she's here is she's displaying the, the future of agriculture. The future of agriculture is, is black and white, which is Holstein Friesian, which is the breed that's produced the milk most efficiently. And we, we want people to, to be attracted to the fact that um, you uh, healthy cow, and she looks healthy, doesn't she? Healthy cow, good feeds, gives good production. <laughs> See this? This chicken has a face like a bum. Lindsay and Natalie to talk to the chickens and stuff like that. For me, I want the far more glamorous jobs, and uh, I think in a minute I'm going to spend our budget for the TV show on one of these little things here, one of these great little speedboats. A man is going to tell me more about it. What's your name, sir? David Johnson. Um, working from Cyril Johnson and Company up in Carried Off. We've just recently got into boats over the last two years. So this is one of our smaller toys that we have. Um, 
nice little day cruiser boat. Um, family boat, sort of ideal for the sort of people that are at the show here today. So would you sell many at the Balmoral show, or do you hope to sell many this week? It's really not the sort of machine that you would sell. I mean, people are coming here expecting to buy a tractor, you know, a digger or whatever, but yeah, it's nice to have something different at the show, so it's created a bit of interest, yeah. All right, so I have a little bit of budget left for, for, from the money for this TV show. How much would one of these things cost me? Well, at a special discounted show price, we'll be doing this at around £33,000 today. Yeah. So compare it to one of the diggers across the way at probably 300000 You know, it's cheap at half the price, isn't it? One of those diggers costs 300000 I never knew. I never knew that. I didn't know that. Big money, yeah, yeah. So we're really at the entry end of the market, but... You know, for people on a budget, you know, it's a nice little boat now. So it is. So that's it from us from the Balmoral Show this year. I feel better that I've come here today because I feel that I've learned something. I've learned something about sheep, Lindsay. Did you know that? Yes, that sheep live in Northern Ireland, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Did you learn anything today? Um, probably to wear socks whenever I'm walking around. So you don't get shit on your feet? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Natalie, you knew lots about horses anyway, but have you learned anything today? I have learned that I really shouldn't get into a cattle crusher, because scary people are looking after it. Indeed. <laughs> anyway, we've had a great day. If you haven't been to the Balmoral Show before, ladies and gentlemen, go next year, trust me. I didn't. It was only a wee tiny bit. <laughs> Can't feel it. The shoes are so high up the ground. My town's running all over the place at the minute. So. <laughs> Do you want a song as well while I'm here? Does it not trouble you that there's no water about? It does around? a wee bit. <laughs> yeah. Or should you ride for somebody else? No, it's the college's horse. <laughs> are we ready? Yep. Uh, yes. Yes, okay. We're going to the bunnies, did you say? No. Oh, sorry, Lindsay's got a call here. Um, we're in the chicken hatch.